Hello everyone, my name is Kirill and today we will talk about simple but common mistakes in system design. Let's get started. So, the first issue we will cover is connected with idempotency. It can happen when there is communication between two services with data creation in the second service. It can lead to duplicated data. Let's consider this example. We have advertisement service. In our scheme also we have a user who sends to us data about an impression of the ad. The payload has ad ID. Uh, ad ID is the ID of the advertisement we check the impression for. Also service has a downstream dependency, external ad service, and external ad service has its own database. The final goal of the whole scheme is to increase this counter. Now let's imagine this. What if there is sometimes there is high latency between external ad service and the database? Let's also imagine this. Right after we have successfully increased the counter, the user decides to break the connection because of the total high latency. In that case, we have successfully increased the counter, but from the user's perspective, the request failed. So the user decides to retry the request. So it sends the same request twice. And now there is no high latency between external ad service and the database. We have successfully increased the counter again. And from the user's perspective, everything is fine too. So, we have increased the counter twice. We had the only expression, but the counter is 2. The counter should be 1, but, it's, but it is 2. That's the idempotency issue we will try to fix. How we can, fi how we can fix it? Uh, we could add event ID, one more ID to our payload. But unlike add ID, which is the ID of the add, this ID, event ID, is the ID of the particular event. Unique ID for every impression, every event. And now, having uh, that ID, we, we also should add that ID to the payload between service and external ad service. And now, having that ID lets us to duplicate data on the database level. So, even if we have two different payloads for the same impression, we can deduplicate we can deduplicate it by event ID on the database level, which is fine, and now our data is consistent. Okay, let's move on. Next issue is external request inside transaction. It can happen when there is transaction to the database and inside that transaction we request an external service. It can lead to exhausted database connection pool. And let's consider why. So we have an advertisement service as uh, the example again. Also we have a user who creates an ad campaign. Under the hood, the service starts transaction, it inserts data to the, to the database and it sends a POST request to external ad service. At the first glance, it can work, plus transaction provides us data consistency. But let's imagine this. What if there is high latency between service and external ad service, plus there is so service has a lot of users. Eventually, it will lead to exhausted database connection pool. And this is why. We won't release our database connection here until the request is finished. So in this case, if we have high latency here and high load here, we will end up with uh, having exhausted database connection pool. So, how can we fix it? We can use a queue. Basically, it doesn't matter what type of queue, but the eventual scheme will depend on the type of the queue. In this scheme, I use database queue. Database queue, in fact, just a table. 
inside the same database. So now it's pretty safe for us to use transaction and to do these two operations inside, inside the same transaction. Because in fact, these two operations, insert and create job, are just two, two, uh, two SQL queries to the same database. We fixed uh, that that database connection pool issue, but we also need to create data in external aid service. To do that, we could add a worker which sends data, which uh, gets a job from the queue and sends data to the external aid service. So in this scheme, we got rid of the connection pool issue plus we have uh, eventual consistency. So our data is consistent. Okay, that's fine. Let's move on. Next issue is request and service at the same time. It can happen when multiple clients request a service at the same time and it can lead to overloaded service. Let's consider an example. This example is about service and client app. Client app requests service to get new plugin versions and everything is fine if we have just a few clients. But what if we have multiple clients and what if we have, for instance, 2 million clients? And usually these 2 million clients, the load from these 2 million clients is distributed among the day because some uh, users use the app in the morning, some of them use it in the evening, and so on and so forth. This some something like a cron job with a specified time, and the time is specified so that all the apps will request our service at the exactly same time. It can lead to an overloaded service and temporary outage. To fix that issue, we could we could add some uh, some uh, random time. I mean, client client apps could instead of requesting our service at the same time, they could request our service at a random time. So the load will be distributed among the day, and it it won't be in in this case. We will not end up with uh, overloaded service. Okay, let's move on. Next issue is lack of rate limiter. Okay, so let's let's consider the same example, the previous example, by design on the client side. But let's also imagine that we added a rate limiter before our service. So in this case, if we even if there is bad design on the client side our rate limiter won't let client apps to overload our service because we can specify on the rate limiter side a rule. For instance, some, something like no more than 2000 RPS. Plus, we can restrict a particular user from sending us too many requests. So in that case, we, we, won't, we won't end up with these issues. Okay, uh, so rate limiter is a very good thing, but let's now talk about memory limiter. For instance, well, let's imagine we have restricted the number of requests, but what if payload of a particular request is too big? For instance, let's consider this two example in Golang. This is uh, po a post handler and in this handler we read all the data from the body and what if the size of the body is too big for instance 5 gigabytes most likely we will have out of memory error in that case so how can we fix it how we can restrict uh, the client from sending us to too, too, too many bytes in Golang, we could do that with just one line of code. 
So with this line, we specify that the body shouldn't be more than 500 kilobytes. So now with this line of code, instead of crashing our application, the client will get an error. So we, we have fixed it. Okay, let's... Now let's talk about retries and let's consider a very simple example. Just client, service and external dependency. Request failed, which can obviously can, uh, can happen because, because of network issues, because of temporary outage or some, something like that. So we should handle these cases when request failed. Uh, how, how can we do that? We could retry, we could send the same request. Uh, and uh, if, if we don't do that, if we don't use retry policy, we could end up with high, uh, high error rate and poor, poor user experience. Okay, so let's move on. Next issue is connected with retries, but a bit trickier. What if we have added retries, but we haven't added back off? And for instance, we send a request to external service and the request fails. Then we retry and next request fails too. And the third one fails too. We have retries, which is fine. What if this service is overloaded? In that case, we are making things worse, not better, because we don't let the service recover. So instead of just sending request one by one, we, we can use back-off strategy. And here are back-off strategies. So the first one is linear. A linear strategy is about waiting for some constant time. For instance, we could wait for one second between first and second requests. Next one is linear with a jitter. It's pretty the same as linear, but instead of waiting for one second, we would wait for one second plus random time, like one second plus random time between uh, twenty between ten and twenty milliseconds, for instance. Okay, and next strategy is exponential. Uh, exponential is about waiting not just static time, but we we wait between uh, first and second request for one second between second and third request for two seconds, then for four seconds, then for eight, and so on and so forth. So we double our wait waiting time uh, after every try. And the last exponential shell with jitter, it's something, something like uh, it's the same as exponential, but with random, random time, like in uh, the second approach. So that's pretty much it. Thank you for your attention.